So, so far in our discussion on molecular orbitals, we have combined two atomic 1s orbitals of the H atom to form two molecular orbitals. So, here we have our two H atoms, the 1s orbital and the 1s orbital. We combine these two atomic orbitals to form two molecular orbitals. One molecular orbital, the bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy and is stabilizing while the higher in energy and the destabilizing molecular orbital is called the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now what we haven't done so far is used our electrons. Remember, an electron is found in this atomic orbital and one electron is found in this atomic orbital because we have two identical H atoms and each are neutral, so each have one a uh, neutron, uh, one neutron, one proton, and one electron. So, here we have a positive one-half spin. Here we have a negative one-half spin. When these two guys combine, where would these two electrons want to go? In the higher energy or the lower energy? Remember, nature likes stabilizing states. They like low energy. So that means these two electrons will combine and will go into this bonding molecular orbital. Now, according to the Pauli exclusion principle, two things must happen. A maximum of two electrons should be found in this orbital, and these guys should have positive one-half and negative one-half, so opposite spins. And that's exactly what we have here. So these electrons will not want to go into this orbital because this is higher in energy and it causes the bond to destabilize or break apart. So, once again, this was uh, combining two atomic 1s orbitals to form two molecular orbitals. Now, let's combine 1s orbital and a 2p orbital. Remember, a 2p orbital has this 8 shape. Right? Okay, so let's look at A and let's look at B. Here I have two ways, two potential ways, in which our two atomic orbitals can interact in space. In part A, we have an orthogonal interaction. In part B, we have a non-orthogonal interaction. Orthogonal simply means perpendicular. So, Let's see which one of these is the correct interaction. In other words, which one of these will form molecular bonds and which one of these will not form molecular bonds. So let's begin with A. Now, remember, this plus and, so and minus does not mean charge. It means, for example, the plus means that we're combining the 1s positive orbital and the 2p positive orbital. Now, when we combine the two positive orbitals, we get the following figure. When we combine the positive 1s orbital and the negative one, uh, 2p orbital, we get the following interaction. To get the negative 2p, we simply switch it or flip it. So here we have our two interactions. So let's look at this guy. So our positive will want to interact in a bonding way with the positive 2p. So, positive 1s wants to interact with the positive side of the 2p orbital. And likewise, at the same time, when these guys are interacting in a bonding way, these guys are interacting in an anti-bonding way. And that's because we have a positive and a negative. Remember, positive and positive orbitals create bonding interactions, positive and negative, create anti-bonding. So here we have a bonding and an anti-bonding. Let's go to this one. Here we have the same exact thing. Even though we flipped our 2p orbital, we still have a bonding orbital between the positive 1s and the positive 2p. And we have a negative interaction or an anti-bonding interaction because we have a positive 1s and a negative 2p. So what happens when we have bonding and antibonding? Well, the bonding will exactly cancel out the antibonding. And that means we will have a net interaction of zero. So orthogonal approach of orbitals, 
or this guy does not allow for bonding because the bonding interactions are canceled out by the anti-bonding interaction. So there will be no interaction when our two atomic orbitals, the 1s and the 2p, approach in this orthogonal fashion. So now let's look at part b. Now we have the following non-orthogonal interaction. So once again, let's draw our pictures out. So we have the positive 1s interacts with the positive 2p. So we keep the two orientations and we have the following picture. So this is one molecular orbital. And now let's try to do the negative. So we have the 1s positive and the 2p negative. So we flip the 2p and we have the following depiction. Now we have a node or a nodal plane uh, symbolized by this uh, black dash here. So we have the positive 1s interacts in an anti-bonding fashion with the negative 2p. And we create this nodal plane which is once again simply a region where the electron density is zero. In other words, electrons will never, will have a zero probability to be found in this region here. And notice that we don't have the same situation as we have here. In other words, we simply have bonding and then we have anti-bonding. So that means this will be the correct interaction. This is how our two or how our 1s and our 2p orbitals will interact to form our two molecular orbitals. So we put in two atomic orbitals and we get out two molecular orbitals. And this is our picture here. So this is our energy diagram. So this is our 1s orbital and remember the 2p orbital is slightly higher on the energy level. It's slightly higher and so that means this guy will be slightly above our energy level of the 1s. So we have one electron in the 1s and the one electron in the 2p. They will interact to form a stabilizing, lower in energy, bonding molecular orbital and a destabilizing, higher in energy, anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now in the next lecture, we're going to see how two 2p orbitals interact to form molecular orbitals.